Today, it looks like it's robot chassis all the way down. So after going one and two back at the Michigan mashup a few months ago with my Antweight Combat Robot here, Nylon Brigade, the very first Antweight I ever built, I came up with a list of things that I want to improve and a list of things that I wanted to keep. Now to address some of the items on the improvement list, one of the things I have to do is reduce the weight of the robot and that's where I'm going to start with today. In particular, I'm going to focus on the chassis. Now when I started building this robot, been a couple of years ago, I started by laying out all my components on a little board, driving it around for the sole purpose of kind of getting an idea of my head as to just how big the robot needed to be. Flash forward a few years and I've got a complete robot. I'm going to do something kind of similar here. We're going to take this robot apart, rearrange the internal components, and figure out if I can reduce the size of it at all. So I'm basically playing a bit of a game of Tetris with robot stuff. <laughs> Let's get started with that. Then, once I've got a new layout of components here, I can figure out if I can reduce the width of the chassis at all. Then I can go back over to my design and make the same changes there in terms of reducing the width of the chassis. And disclaimer, as I put in here every now and then, yes, I do use Blender to design my robots. Is it the best tool for the job? No, not really. But when you're a visual effects artist, it works pretty well. And just like that, the first round of design is done. I've got the first prototype 3D printed out here. All in all, I was able to reduce the width of the chassis by about 20 millimeters. And that width came from a lot of kind of the side areas over here, which means there was a fair bit of 3D printed material removed. Now I'm going to go back in, play one more round of Tetris with Robot Electronics. Just to kind of review my design, make sure it actually fits in this design, and see if I can go ahead and save even more space somehow. And well, it turns out that I can probably reduce this chassis width by about 10 millimeters more. So let's jump back into my blender design make those modifications, and then throw this chassis out. I'll actually probably use it a bit later when it comes to testing the weapon, because that's what I do with a lot of the prototype chassis. I toss it in my box, and I beat the crap out of it just so I have something to hit. So it will be used again, just not in a form where it's productive, I guess. Okay, weapon testing destruction is pretty productive. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to the design process. This chassis is printed out, and of course I've got all the components in it, because he assigned me play, I guess, Tetris. Well, I wasn't really playing Tetris that time, because I knew where everything went. I was just making sure everything fit the way it did, and yes, it does. So this is probably going to be pretty close in terms of size to the final chassis that I'm going to be running with for the next version of Nylon Brigade. I also went ahead and 3D designed and 3D printed a lid for the chassis, but I kind of forgot that I need to cut a bit of a hole out here at the top um, for the weapon, so this particular lid isn't going to work. On to the weapon test pile. You go as well. So, I'm currently estimating between the new chassis and the new lid when it is printed in the same nylon material that I used for the previous chassis, which is one of them sitting right here. I'm looking at a weight savings of maybe 10 to 15 grams. I've got some more cleanup to do here to figure out what exactly the final weight's going to be. And that may seem like I put a lot of time and effort into this particular process just to save about 2 to 3% of the body weight. But what I didn't mention is I actually made a number of other changes to this chassis in particular. Yeah, there's actually a bit of a firewall right up here around where the weapon went. 
So there's things like that that I'll talk about in future videos that those changes here in this step should allow me to reduce weight in things like, for example, the weapon cage for the weapon itself. I can reduce the size of the weapon shaft, which should save a little bit of weight there. And most notably now, because I've had about a 30 millimeter reduction in the width of the robot, and most of that width reduction came from the sides, in theory, if I'm doing the math right, the armor band that wraps around the chassis here, you can see kind of flopping around at the moment, whatever material it ends up being, is about 60 millimeters less in perimeter, and that's going to save a lot of weight if I go for the same style of armor band, or that may allow me to add additional armor, whether that be up front, or make the whole armor band a little bit taller, or some combination of that, because both those items were on this list, and therefore I can basically get more armor for the same weight, because the overall size of the armor is smaller. But more on that process when I get to that step in the build, which will probably be a few videos down the road. But anyway, I think I'm going to call that here for this part of the build. I think that's a kind of give you an idea of how you can go about refining your chassis a bit to make it a little bit more compact and a little bit more lightweight, I guess, so that you can prepare for saving weight and adding cooler, more powerful things. Like I've had this thing sitting on my desk for like a bunch of videos now. My new bigger, beefier motor. It's a, probably about twice as powerful as the one that's in there, but we'll find out when this actually ends up in the robot. It literally has just been sitting here on my desk in the last like 10 videos. If you go back and watch them, even if I'm like painting a miniature, it's just sitting right here. <laughs> or if I'm on TOV Live, it's just sitting right here. It really needs to go in the robot and I want to really see just how much more powerful this thing can possibly be. Now there's one last thing I wanted to mention though before I sign off here, because I got a bit of a different shirt on. I went old school this time. This is the, might be the original Northeast Robotics Club t-shirt. It is close to, I'm gonna say 21 years old, this shirt. Way back when this organization was founded, they had a few events. I was one of the early members sometime in the time range of 2001 to 2003 when they kind of formalized their business entity. I forgot what all the details of that was. But I got the shirt at the same time. I think I got it like 2002. So hey, I thought I'd bring it out for some of the robot combat videos. I might have worn it before to be honest with you. I forget. But I just found it in my closet one more time and it's still in pretty good shape despite being about 21 years old. <laughs> Wow, this shirt is older than half my age. That's, that's something to think about. Anyway, I'm rambling too long. I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, as well as Team Rocker Robotics. And every now and then I do dive into just combat robotics for something different than on this channel. Normally, I'm painting up miniatures or talking about some tabletop game stuff. I've got a few painted tutorials lined up for Star Wars Shatterpoint. Both robots, though, by the way, the B-1 Battle Droids, as well as the Magna Guard. <laughs> So I'll be filming those here shortly and putting them out. So it's kind of robot stuff, but it's not real robots. It's like sci-fi fighting robots, not real combat robots. Regardless, thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you next time.